Hey Booktube, welcome back. Uh, it's a beautiful fall day today. Uh, today is the 14th of October, the beginning of Spookathon. I'm actually on vacation this entire week, so I'm hoping to get through the two books that I've chosen uh, for that. Uh, before I get to those, I'm going to just do a quick kind of um, catch up on what I've finished reading so far for Victober. I already did one update, uh, but since then I've read a couple others. Um, I found this graphic novel at work. The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, this is um, adapted by Ian Edgington and illustrated by I.N.J. Kalberg. And I absolutely adored it. Um, I really like the art style. The paneling is really superb. I love the way they kind of zoom in on scenes. and Just really good, good uh, balance between close-ups and full scenes. And the coloring was really nice. I just love the illustrations and I like the depictions of, well this is not Sherlock, this is uh, Watson here. Um, can, uh, let's see if I find one of Sherlock. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's Sherlock and Watson. This is a really good uh, adaptation of the story and I really enjoyed it. There's apparently um, one for every one of uh, Doyle's novels. So, uh, Study in Scarlet, and etc., uh, Valley of Fear. Um, I'm hoping to try and track those other three down sometime, but I really, really enjoyed this one. I also finished Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. This is my book under um, 200 pages. Uh, probably a lesser known one from her uh, as opposed to The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, but uh, still fairly fairly popular. It, it's basically almost autobiographical about her times as a governess. She draws a lot on that experience that she had, and it really shows how little life they pretty much had. They were expected to you know, tend to the children, but given very little authority over them, and then blame for the the lack of social skills and um, and education and, and the children by the parents, even though they didn't support the governess at all. And um, her, this character, Agnes Gray, goes through quite a, a bit of loneliness and, and, and um, frustration and, um, and fear of whether she'd lose her job because she wasn't performing the way she should be, even though she wasn't, like I said, given any authority over the children. The, the kids are just monstrous. Um, they're awful, uh, the way they just kind of push her around and, and none of her feelings seem to matter. And uh, I felt very, very frustrated on her behalf and uh, of course she couldn't speak up. She had no, you know, ability to do that without the thought of maybe losing her job. But uh, it was very well written, very, very entertaining. I, I found myself really caring about this character and hoping for a happy ending and you'll have to read it if you want to find out if she has one or not. Uh, I also finished uh, listening to uh, Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I'm vaguely familiar with the story based on a TV miniseries starring Judy Dench as uh, one of the main characters, Miss Maddie Jenkins. Uh, she's one of two spinster sisters, uh, her other sister, Deborah Jenkins. And the story's told by a young woman who goes to spend time with them, and uh, there are all these sort of little vignettes, little stories uh, within the town of Cranford that seems to be run mostly by women. Uh, there are some funny, um, humorous sections in it, particularly when there's fear of um, a burglar running around in town and um, little tea parties and things that happen. Uh, I love uh, Miss Maddie Jenkins' uh, way of dealing with uh, fear that someone could be lurking in the house or hiding under the bed was to roll a ball under the bed because she was afraid to actually look underneath for the fear of actually having someone staring back at her. So I wonder what she would have done if the ball didn't make it all the way through. Uh, but I really enjoyed the story. Um, I heard that the TV miniseries is kind of a conglomeration of some of her other stories, so it wasn't just the novel, um, but I felt that it, it um, drew enough from it to be a good adaptation of it. And I really enjoyed, I think, the miniseries a little bit more than the novelization, or the novel itself. Um, but still, it makes me want to read a lot more Elizabeth Gaskell, so I'm looking forward to picking up more of her titles. I forgot to mention in my last uh, update also that I was reading uh, on my ebook the Winborn Book of Victorian Ghost Stories. This is a collection of ghost stories in this particular volume one. Hello, please. <laughs> in volume one. Yeah, it's a little loud. Um, it's all by women authors. Um, the rest of the series, I'm not certain, but the editor seemed to draw just from women authors in, in volume one, and I've read about four short stories so far. The only author I recognize in any of them is the first short story in this collection, which was by Elizabeth Gaskell, uh, coincidentally. And uh, nothing specifically a really creepy feel to them. They're just kind of tame gothic stories, I'd have to describe them as. Uh, but um, I've stopped on those so far because now, like I said, it is officially Spookathon for this week, and I want to focus on the books that I had chosen for that. And I'm starting off with Darcy Coates' uh, The Folk Croft Ghost. 
It's about uh, two siblings, um, Tara and Kyle. Uh, something has happened to their mother. She's in uh, like a coma or something from an accident I, or illness. I'm not sure. She's in the hospital. And uh, she, they, they've been staying with uh, some somewhat close friends, uh, but uh, it's too crowded in that house, and they're too busy with their work and stuff to be able to look after these children. So uh, the grandparents, of whom they've never met, uh, have kind of stepped forward and volunteered to take in the kids, and they kind of live in this, you know, off, way off in the woods kind of house, and... Um, kind of curious to see uh, what they're like because they, they seem to think that there's some strained relationship between um, their mother and um, these grandparents of theirs because she apparently had changed her name. They don't have the same last name. She's never really mentioned them or offered um, you know, to take them to see them or them to come and see them. Uh, so I'm wondering what, what the strained relationship is. What is it with these grandparents? There's going to be something creepy, I know. But I'm starting off with this one. I've already started reading a little bit of it. I'm just 20 pages in, so I plan on diving into that. But since I finished my audiobook of Cranford, I was looking for something else to um, listen to. And although I won't be driving back and forth to work where I usually listen to my audiobooks, uh, I will try to maybe listen to it a little bit here and there while I'm a walking skippy or something. Uh, and I've chosen um, Carmilla, and the reason I picked this was because Audible had has two free um, Audible originals every month that you can choose from, and one of those happened to be Carmilla. So I picked that. I've already read the story before. It's by Charles, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Sheridan Lefanu. It's a real short story, kind of vampire-esque. Um, but this one I picked because uh, David Tennant is one of the uh, narrators here. It's sort of enacted, you might say. So Rose Leslie and Phoebe Fox are the other two narrators in this. So uh, just started that one. Um, I heard David Tennant, I guess he was the character in the beginning. I did not recognize his voice at all. He's playing some old doctor um, discussing a case of this woman um, and what she experienced. Um, so I guess that was him. I don't know. <laughs> Where was that Scottish brogue I was really hoping for? But anyway, uh, it's David Tennant. I'm going to listen to it. And it was just something fairly quick that I could listen to. Um, it's only like two hours long. It didn't cost me anything. Like I said, it was one of the free uh, offers for Audible members. But anyway, are you guys participating in Spookathon? Uh, let me know down below if you are and what you're listening to or reading. Um, I, it's a bit cold out here. That's why I'm kind of all scrunched up. It's only like 49 degrees, but it was so nice off to film. I wanted to come out here. So anyway, I'm going inside now and get a cup of hot chocolate. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.